Hi, my name is Sean Linden. I'm the writer and director of uh, Hunter Hunter, and you are listening to the Horror Squad podcast. to the Horror Squad podcast episode number 192. Tonight we're talking about 1995. David Fincher directed Seven, which I don't know about you guys, but it got, like, I forgot the Seven was actually in the title. So I was trying to search IMDb for trivia and I'm like, what the fuck is Seven at? But they were cute with it, so I had to figure it out. But I'm one of your co-hosts, Todd. Uh, we have Sam who's nodding, but she didn't say yes, so it made me awkward. We have Steve <laughs> and we have Joe. How are you guys doing? Well, because I was going to say that's probably why we couldn't find it, Joe. And then I was I said that, um, well, I was going to say I made Joe buy it instead of looking for it. But I didn't know if I wanted to include that in, that we were trying to find it to watch it for free. But that's fine. Mm-hmm. This is all good stuff. I think everyone tries to look for free. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How much was it? Three ninety nine or so? Three ninety nine. Yeah. yeah. It's worth it. It was worth it. Yeah. That's what I said. I told mm-hmm. Joe I would pay him the three ninety nine. dollars going to have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Put his little lunch money bag. Yes, <laughs> thank you. But I have a, I have a story. Oh, it's an interesting one. I told Sam I was like I cannot wait to tell this on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, Actually, it. like while it was happening, I'm like, oh, this is going to be great content right here. Um, so I went to Texas Frightmare Weekend. Um, over the weekend, which I will give a full breakdown during the what watch segment because it was a busy weekend. I wasn't really able to watch anything, but I do want to share this. Um, so I was. So I took uh, an airplane, obviously, to get down there. Uh, And uh, on the way there, there was – so, like, I sat down, and there was no one in my row yet. So I was like, oh, maybe I'm going to get lucky. Like, no one's going to come in my row. Like, literally, like, two minutes before we're getting ready to take off, two people showed up. Um, I I don't really know what, um, you know, uh, ethnicity they were or anything like that, but I could tell, like – you know, she was wearing, wearing like a, a, what is it? A, a hijab or hip job. I don't know. I don't know the terminology. I apologize. The hair covering. But yeah. Yeah. The hair covering. So I'm assuming like a, a Muslim couple or something like that. Um, and, uh, they sat down, the husband sat in the window seat. She sat in the middle. I was, so I was on the end in the aisle seat and, uh, you know, they got adjusted or whatever, like, and then I sat back down and she looks over and she sees my exorcist tattoo, which, you know, it's like a fucking demon with a tongue. She starts freaking out. She starts crying. She starts saying like prayers. Like she's like doing like a sign, like a, like, and she starts like saying prayers, like in her language or whatever. And she like, this went on for like 10 minutes, like while we were taking off and shit like that. And it was so uncomfortable and awkward. And I just, just, just kind of tried to ignore it. Um, and once we like were, she finally did settle down, but I was like in my head thinking like, Oh man, like I was going to call like a stewardess over or something and ask them if they could like move my seat. Cause I felt like really bad about it. So I started like kind of covering my tattoo with my hand, like, and stuff like that. So she wouldn't have to look at it. And yeah. So it was interesting. It's the first time I had ever wow. experienced something like that with my tattoos. Um, but it was a very different story. Once I got to the convention, I got a lot of compliments on. So it was a, a very polar <laughs> opposite, uh, thing, uh, but yeah, it was it was uh it was interesting. Hopefully there's no like curses put on you or something. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that sucks, man, to be that scared of a tattoo. I mean, if you're like hardcore religious, I could totally see that being like, especially like when you're and Sam like had a good point. She's like, you know, we were getting ready to take off. She probably thought it was like her final flight. Like she was like <laughs> she was like we were gonna like crash or something like that. <laughs> Yeah, at least you didn't whip out your phone and start watching Exorcist or something. <laughs> or if I your know. head slowly turned with your tongue out, you're like, hey. <laughs> right? I actually watched... start bleeding. Like, geez. Yeah, <laughs> I actually watched another Morgan Freeman uh, movie on the way to the uh, to the con too. I did. I watched the Shawshank Redemption because nice. it was on there for free. So I was like, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll give Shawshank a watch, and still as good as I remembered. Yeah. So back to this couple. Did, yes. <laughs> did the, the man, the husband ever say, like, did he freak out too? No, not really. He just, like, he kept, like, um, patting her, like, on her, like, leg and stuff like that, trying to, like, comfort her. Wow. Um, but, I mean, she settled down, like, after, like, you know. Are you 100% really... sure that she looked at your tattoo and wasn't just 100... afraid to fly? 
I mean, it could be, I think it could have been a combination of both, but she kept continuously looking over like at me and my arms. So like, I know it was like definitely a factor. Um, she definitely could have been afraid of flying too, but I think that definitely contributed to her fears. <laughs> well, whoever's out, if she's out there listening, <laughs> yes, I, I, chance. I guess I kind of apologize, but <laughs> <laughs> wow, that sucks going through life. So like, easily triggered like that right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> watching tv and see like a halloween trailer if i can blows your mind <laughs> yeah <laughs> well hopefully you had fun i we look forward to you talking about it later because yeah you know, Texas is my I have a lot, state, I have, and i'm glad yeah. you had art hate art Aid's awesome oh yeah 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 heart Aid barbecue delicious um me and sam actually so i had not even realized that sam and i went there um one texas frightmare um weekend but yeah barbecue was was awesome i got ribs and brisket mm. and jalapeno kielbasa which was the best thing i had there no doubt about it it was so fucking good but yeah good stuff definitely recommend it everyone kind of like says it's like a touristy place but i don't know like i thought it was good i thought it was good texas barbecue so yeah so say, everyone every place has a place like that where everyone goes to but like locals almost shun it because it's like oh you know tourists go there that's not you know the little place down mm-hmm. the street that we love and stuff so you have to drive like two hours to get to and right exactly it's a hole in the wall <laughs> you get there it's only cash you're like <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> yeah, exactly so what have you guys been up to uh, lately sam and uh, todd anything good uh really just organizing doing boring stuff trying to get my life right you know the usual how was you your girl time this yeah, weekend? I, was, I was gonna say yeah uh, did you uh, pizza? treat yourself <laughs> Did I enjoy my alone time? Is that what you asked? Uh-huh. Hell yes, I did. It was amazing. Like, I never felt so relaxed. And I realized, <laughs> like, damn, I'm like literally so tense whenever Joe's around because he's just like a ping pong ball bouncing off the walls, bouncing off of every little thing around here. So it was nice and quiet. I enjoyed my morning. I enjoyed my afternoon. Like, I was busy all all weekend but it was just so nice because it was just like me me and my thoughts me and raven i got to like listen to music just like go at my own pace which was lovely i I can respect that because people think i mean when my family goes to california without me you know Mm because i gotta stay home watch the dogs go to work and stuff but mike no like there's something about just having you know your own routine get some coffee sit down on the porch whatever it's super relaxing so i think everyone deserves a couple days off you know I think so too yeah my alone time is very important and Joe didn't even want to go and I was like please please go please go (laughs) although although we missed him but it's nice I I enjoy my my alone time so when I get it I really I really enjoy it but but next time stretch it out like three or four more days Joe right give her some time I'll try I'll try maybe yeah maybe I'm sure he I'm sure he enjoyed his time without me too so I did. I mean, the con was great. It was the first, I mean, I'll talk more about it later, but it was like, it was my first con since like the pandemic started and it was, I forgot how much I missed going to them. That's for sure. There, there, it was a very good time. Awesome. Uh, you guys want to get in some questions? Yeah. yeah. You can ask us those questions on social media at the horror squad podcast or on our discord where there's always a good time talking about all sorts of things. Been very jealous in there lately as uh, a few of them have been coming back from Halloween Horror Nights, which was my annual tradition for the last decade, and now I haven't been in two years. Uh, it just sucks that I'm not allowed in the U.S., so uh, it is what it is. But I am very much appreciate and enjoy everyone sending pics and reviews and talking about their experiences because it's as close as I'm going to get. So uh, check out everything on the Discord. It's a great time. First question was actually sent last week, but just missed our cutoff time. We had just finished recording when it was sent. So uh, that's why we're a week late, but here it is. It's from Mr. Boonsta. He says, the Big Lebowski makes me want to bowl. The first season of True Detective makes me want to drink a cold beer. What horror movie makes you want to do something? Cheers from Morgantown, Wyoming. What WV, is that Wyoming? West Virginia. Virginia, w, WV? WV, West Virginia. Oh, West Virginia, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I don't Wy- know. Wyoming would be WY. Pre- Okay. Brush up uh, on your U.S. Yeah, state, Steve. My, my state abbreviations? Yeah, no thanks. That's so, uh, nice, man. It's got some nice, uh, nice woods. 
right. So what uh, horror movies make you want to do something specific? Hmm. I mean, Sean, uh, drinking, like he mentioned drinking with um, uh, True Detective, but like whenever I watch Shaun of the Dead and they're all just like hanging at the Winchester, like with a nice yeah, the cold pint. pint, like, yeah, it definitely, definitely makes me want to drink. It's <laughs> a good one. Um, Dawn of the Dead, man. Like, just go to the mall, hang out. And okay. uh, Friday the 13th, camping, because I like being by the lake. I like being outside. I like being one with nature. Yes. Every year... I watch Halloween while I'm carving pumpkins. So anytime I even see that movie, I think of carving pumpkins. Or my other answer would be The Exorcist, to which if you listen to the show, you know exactly what I feel like doing when I watch The Exorcist, but that's a long story. You'll have to- Masturbating with a crucifix? Getting, getting frisky? <laughs> yeah, getting frisky. <laughs> masturbating. <laughs> no, not masturbating. It's gross. <laughs> uh, all right, so next question was also sent, I think last week, but just missed our cutoff. It's from M. She says, what are some of your horror pet peeves? Example, when suddenly the car doesn't start, they don't have phone service, et cetera. It can be movie related or anything horror really. I hate when uh, specifically women fall um, because it's not that hard to run straight. And uh, it's pretty frustrating in modern times. I know back in the day they did that. It was a trope. But nowadays I'm like, let's run, let's run straight. I there, there's a movie called, I think something like Don't Knock at the Door something along those lines where i'm i swear to god you've never seen someone fall like that ever in a horror film it's it's like the probably the most blatant like chase scene where she just keeps falling and it's just ridiculous like if ever you watch it you'll know what i'm talking about she, being chased by a big fat naked guy and she just like falls every <laughs> that two, don't answer two the feet. phone maybe there's a big fat naked guy that kills women in that one i'd have to check my uh um, I think it's don't knock on the door. Or something like that. There's also one I don't like too when when cops in movies like someone's bloody. Oh my god, help me! And they're like, "What's wrong?" And they like they keep their gun holstered, and then they inevitably get ambushed. Just take a gun out, or at least listen to the person, or take them away from the scene. Something I hate it. Those are my two. Uh, for me, I think it would be like splitting up. Like, all right, you go this way, and I'll go this way, and uh, we'll, we'll meet up or whatever. It's like. It's the, always the worst idea. You you always work better in uh, groups. I feel like, uh, and yeah, whenever you split up, it's just never good. Um, I was saying that that's a good one, Joe, because I hate when people also split up. It makes no sense. Um, and also, I feel like it's a pet peeve of when there's a couple in a horror movie, and instead of like figuring out how to get away or how to get out they end up having sex and it's like can we just wait for a second like let we can have sex after it'll be more enjoyable okay uh mine is might be more of a like film school thing but when and more of an indie thing but when a horror film has like some trick up their sleeve and they super overuse it throughout the whole film uh for example i was watching um from dust till dawn part two uh, today and they do pov shots like non-stop throughout the movie like it, it was like good once or twice but by the like 20th time that they do it you're like okay come on like and you see this a lot i find in indie films where they do this trick over and over and over and over whether it's some lighting effect or some um type of kill or a music cue or something like that uh you know todd there, there's a movie we watch in the last couple of months where uh, there was a music cue that happened like oh constantly. my god i don't remember what film it was but i can i don't remember Stupid. but just things like that that you know <laughs> don't overuse the same tricks you know try the different stuff in a movie that, that'd be like, a big pet peeve it was like when matrix came out and everyone had to do bullet time or the camera spinning 360 for like three years yeah yeah yeah, yeah so that's a big one for me that's going to uh, bug me what that movie is called now. <laughs> All right. Uh, next one is from Mandy. She says, hey, squad. I doubt it, but I like to ask this question anyways. Do any of you have any seven items or autos? No. No, nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. Is it even possible? Well, aut autographs is possible. Well, I guess uh, if you order from, like, a, I mean, Brad Pitt and Freeman. No, Brad, yeah, Freeman, no. Brad Pitt Freeman uh, or Kevin Spacey, I guess. But... Um, <laughs> Uh, CPA that the service I use had uh, the sloth guy 
Victor. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> who also played the mummy in the Monster Squad. Oh, that's cool. So that could have been something. I, I, I thought about it, but it was like 50 bucks. I thought it was too much for, yeah. <laughs> for that. But um, no, I don't have anything either. However, when I was a teen, my bedroom was all like different movie references on my wall. And I did have the seven deadly sins written in like blood. Uh, oh, not weird. real blood, obviously, but. Uh, <laughs> Whoa, what the it's fuck? like a red flag. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, on my, my parents form, are like, like, are we going to commit him or are we going to like hey, see what no, happens? Actually, you know, uh, true story had nothing to do with me. Uh, I went to Italy for two weeks with my friends. And when I came back, my sister and my mom had painted my room into different movie references. And that was the nice. one they, they chose. Really? They knew I liked the movie. So. I, did, I had nothing wow. to do with it. That's, <laughs> That's really cool. nice of them. Yeah, it was really cool. It's uh, it's because honestly, I think it's because they hated my room before. Uh, I had wall to wall like magazine pages, like just plastered on the wall, just things that I found amusing that they didn't apparently. Mm -hmm. So uh, they they wanted that shit off my wall, so they just painted it instead. Hardcore porn. I mean, it had some, <laughs> it had some not, not hardcore porn, but it had some girls on it. You know. <laughs> Yeah, it was just uh, angsty I, shit. Steve, I thought you were gonna say uh, I didn't know if you got that fan box item where they had like a Barbie head inside of a a box. No, I didn't get that one. Blood. Okay, is that is they that real? really do that? Yeah, yeah, Bam box so really bad. did that. Yep. It, it, it wasn't in a horror box because I've I've had every single horror box they've done. Uh, okay, must have maybe been it was in, in their original. Maybe yeah, because not a lot of people consider seven horror, right? So that's right. a whole discussion that we're gonna have later, I think. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, no, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there, there was a time Bandbox was just the worst. Uh, lately, they've been great, but yeah, there's definitely a dark period there. Um, her next question, I won't ask you about your sins, but what's a bad habit you have that you'd like to improve? Sam can tell all about mine, probably. <laughs> she she Man, cleaned I, up after him after you were gone for a few days. No, I mean, Picking I... Picking up your socks from the floor. <laughs> Wiping your piss off the toilet seat. What else, Sam? What else we got? <laughs> <laughs> Pick up your dirty underwear. Wait, those are all mine. Never mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I doubt my my bathroom sometimes can get pretty gross, and she does call me out for that quite it's a bit. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> guys if you want to give your girlfriend's boners just literally clean up your bathroom like you'll you'll get you'll be happy that you cleaned up your bathroom that's all it takes that's, that's all, it, all takes, it takes apparently okay <laughs> all right get clean the toilet later exactly um pet uh bad habits uh i don't know oh is that joe's habit yeah. what my i feel like you were gonna say something else me or Joe? Joe. I feel like he's just trying to get off easy. <laughs> hey, we're not, no one's perfect. You know, we all got our. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Todd, you don't know what you missed a perfect over there? No. Nobody's <laughs> perfect. It's bad habits. Um, you must pick your nose. Come on, pick your nose, wipe it under the chair or something. I mean, who Ew. doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> Sam does it for sure. Uh, yep. She's Pick your ass. Picker. She's a double nose picker. What's a double nose picker? <laughs> Two fingers, one in each nostril. Oh my gosh, that sounds each. Go painful. Digging for yeah, there you go. Get it. Get some green. If you boogies. say if you say you've never picked your nose, I think you're automatically a liar. Everyone's picked their nose before. Yeah, Come yeah, on. You're super liar. I mean, if you have a burger <laughs> hanging out, but I'm not picking for gold. <laughs> See, I'm, you're not, lying. I'm not making it a morning activity. No, but there's like you know. In the like, words of Brad Pitt, you're a liar. <laughs> sorry brad pitt i'm not even if it's not hanging but it's like blocking your nostril well, yeah you if you feel it because you're yeah. like wait yeah. a minute yeah but i'm saying i'm not going like what's in there today what can i find <laughs> how is it possible i think i've asked this before how is it possible for butt wiping when you have nails that long i just don't get it because you got to wipe <laughs> my nails bottom. aren't even that long todd if i can see them they're long so how do you they're wipe? not that long that's yeah they are what do you mean? I'm not, I'm not like scraping my asshole with my fingers. Well, every now and then guys back me up. You can get a little slippage. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it can happen. Nails, I well, I'm not a, a monster. Well, I just, Todd. She doesn't pick her. She doesn't wipe her butt either guys. Sam's I make perfect. sure that the toilet paper is covering <laughs> oh, wait, my wait. hand. You guys got bidets now. You don't need toilet paper. We didn't get, we didn't get it yet, but I was going to say, this is perfect reasoning for having If bidets, Joe's, if Joe doesn't want to pay three ninety nine for seven, we sure ain't getting a bidet. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Keep ass. 
Yeah. I mean, I have a laptop that's like 15 years old. Okay. So, but sure. I'll meet 20 <laughs> celebrities for eight, $800 yeah. sure thing. Including yeah, one I mean, I was... we're literally hosting in like two weeks <laughs> or yeah. in a month or whatever. <laughs> you like... dingy. I mean, I did that I just didn't for even like think support and as like a, a thank you, like for yeah. doing it, you know, but yeah, but you know, da- I have Damon's a, a handsome man, dude, from those pictures. He is. He is. He's a fucking good looking dude. He's a very handsome man. <laughs> I, ha- I haven't noticed. <laughs> so you all got your bad habits out? Or? Yeah, we're done. My bad habit is that I like to eat a little too late at night, but I've been doing good, though. I haven't had any food after my dinner. That's, that's my bad habit. My bad habit is, like, let's say I want to do a project in the house. You know, little project, not usually big project, but little projects. I'll go to the store. I'll buy everything I need for it. I'll put the stuff right next to where I want to do the project. Then that stuff will sit there for like a year <laughs> until I actually like do it. So like, say, let's say like I buy a doorstop, for example, so the door doesn't hit the wall. I'll like literally go buy it to the store. I'll bring it back. I'll put it on the counter and I will move that thing around for a year instead of taking the three minutes it'll take to like put it into the wall. And so I procrastinate with little projects, big projects. I'll, I'm all over, but little projects, I don't know why it just, Sometimes I just can't get myself to do it. I got one then. I get too attached too quickly to projects. Like, um, for example, Steve, I like a day ago, I told you, hey, what are you using for your editing, blah, blah, blah. And then like, I'm, I'm going from, I need a new editing program to, oh, wait, now I need a whole PC. Oh, no, I know. I need to get a new Mac instead. Uh, so I ended up spending like a ton of money for no reason. Like I bought a new camera, I bought a new editing software. And it's just like, it's stupid. Sometimes I'll even buy props for shit that I'm never going to use. That's so. exciting. What kind of camera did you get, Todd? Oh, uh, I got a 4K camcorder. What? Mm-hmm. How much was that? It's not, they're not uh, that bad anymore. You can get on Amazon for like 200 bucks. They're what? Pretty cheap. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to get like a, a Sony or Panasonic name brand or anything, but if you get it from Amazon, it's protected if it sucks. Hmm. That, that, that's totally my wife's like bad habit, too, is that she'll have a project in her mind and she'll think about it forever and then I'll buy her whatever she wants for it and then never use it. So yeah, my example, wife wanted to play fucking violin yeah. and I bought it for her and she never opened it. You so, bought her a violin? Yes, I did. And wow, I even bought her like an auto tuner is... so there's no excuse. Oh my gosh, Todd. Never opened the damn thing. She won't let me sell it either. Wow, or throw that's it away. amazing. I'm sorry, Steve, what did you do? I, I, I was, <laughs> actually, basically the same thing. Uh, she, what did she's, you buy your wife? She, she, she's like the little girl in uh, Willy Wonka. You know, like she wants the chocolate bar really bad. So my wife was a guitar, a piano, a fucking like, just, there's always something. There's always an oboe, which is like a kind of wow. bigger clarinet. Yeah. I just, I, I buy it for her and I swear she touches it once and then, all right, what's next? <laughs> you know, like I want something wow. else. Wow, that's it's, amazing. Yeah. Look at you guys invest in your wives dreams meanwhile joe's just buying me more horror stuff just, that i just don't enabling need. you mm-hmm. to collect more mm-hmm. that's so nice of you guys uh, <laughs> might, are there alternative reasons sometimes sure if if, it, if she's busy doing something else i can play my video games you know <laughs> so sometimes exactly. uh, there's okay. uh, ulterior motives but uh, no it's also you know i want to make sure she's happy and stuff wow uh, next question. Boners for Steve and Todd tonight, guys. Uh, next question, still from Mandy. Which piece in your horror collection would make you the most sad if it arrived in a box all broken and destroyed? That's a tough question. Okay. I think if my uh, my Dawn poster that's signed by everybody got ripped or something, I, I mean, you can't replace it. Like, what are you going to do? So that would suck. That is a tough one. Uh Probably my Nightmare on Elm Street 3D poster that I have signed by a lot of the cast. That's one of my favorites. And it was actually one of the first horror collectibles I ever bought. So, yeah. I threw away a signed poster the other day, actually. Of what? Which uh, one? Bill Mosley, Chop Top. Uh, oh. It was one of, my, one of my first ones I ever got when I was, you know, 17, 18. And I haven't moved so many times. It's been ripped. I mean, you know, I was hanging in my parents' you know, house when I was a kid. So yeah. that's how old it is. And then it got gets ripped. And then I had to tape it to the back of another poster and that got ripped. And this is like, you know what? I'm gonna throw a bill away. And I threw him away. It cost me 60 bucks in 2000, 
five or so. Mm. Yeah, I wasn't careful with posters when I was a kid either. Now, now I have nothing that isn't in the frame, but mm-hmm. back then it was just pins and, mm-hmm. <laughs> and Scotch tape. You know? I, I had this original Return of the Living Dead German theater display poster that I got for like, I don't know, 10, 20 bucks at a con, and it goes for a couple hundred online, but I didn't take care of it. <laughs> Hung it up with tape or pins or tacks, and I'm like, oh, I would love to get that poster back, but it's so expensive now. But stupid Todd. You got anything, Sam, that you're really attached to as far as horror collectible? Um, I'm going to say no, because I try not to attach myself to that stuff. Go smash your Meyer snow globe. Okay, don't get, okay, don't do that. <laughs> and don't smash the Myers house that Joe got me. Mm-hmm. That's what I'll pick. Cool. Uh, I'm in along the same lines as Todd. It would be my Walking Dead poster. Just because it's 12 signatures and I got them all myself. And it's just, you know, some of them are dead. I guess the one that's the most irreplaceable of the stuff I have. Like I feel everything else, even though some of them that are dead, I could probably get a replacement for not too, you know, expensive. So that would probably be it. Is that Herschel, one of the guys? Yeah, Herschel's uh, the one that's dead on that. I think he's the only one from The Walking Dead that's dead on the poster. But I have a few, you know, deceased posters now but yeah that, that'd be the toughest because there's so many um her other two questions are actually seven related so i'm gonna wait till the end for those and our last series of questions are on discord first one is from todd was joe happy with max performance oh all right mac jones new england patriots new quarterback and yeah todd i actually was even though the patriots lost yesterday i thought he looked pretty good for a rookie quarterback in his very first start and I think, uh, I think they're going to be good this year. I do. I do. I th- you know, they got to work out some kinks and stuff. They made a lot of mistakes yesterday, mainly penalties and fumbles. Had they not done that, I think they would have won the game. So, yeah, to answer your question, I was impressed. Good. Thank Football you for back, asking. Baby. <laughs> Football is back. I'm excited. Much to a lot of wives and girlfriends' <laughs> dismay. Mm-hmm. Actually, um, I – took a flight early so i'd be home for the patriots kickoff so that's so i skipped the con completely on sunday so i'd be home in time <laughs> just to show how big of a football fan i am i was looking at the seven imdb page to try to figure out who mac was <laughs> 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 they couldn't figure Love it out that. So that, uh, that, that makes sense now uh next year's questions are from chuck captain amazing 85 what would be your sin out of the seven deadly sins Mine is gluttony. Yeah, mine, mine too. Snacking on burgers. Yeah, it's like I just yeah. can't stop. I need, I just overindulge. Mm. Yeah. Mine might be envy because I'll look at other people's horror collections sometimes and I'll really be like, oh my God. <laughs> uh, mine would probably also be gluttony, but I got to also put in one for greed. Uh, it's not so much that I don't give to charity or I don't give to other people. It's more that I, everything I do professionally is to make sure I'm as rich as possible by retirement. You know, like all the moves I make at work is to make sure I'm as secure as possible for my retirement. Like I just, that's all I think about when I'm at work is what can I do next to make more money to have a better, that's, more security. That's admirable though, you know? You're that is, no, towards definitely. Your older, older age. And it's always really heartbreaking to see like, you know, grandma age, older people, whatever that are struggling financially or physically and yeah you gotta you gotta get your retirement stuff going man yeah it's very important my, my dad instilled that in me really young so you know sometimes i'm proud of that because like i look at the people who own the houses on my street and i'm by far the youngest you know it's like, mm-hmm. and I, I think that's a lot of my dad's kind of wisdom that he passed down on me is you know don't spend money you don't have and make right financial decisions um his next one uh, to this day i quote what's in the box what is your go-to movie quote? It doesn't have to be from this movie. That is a great question. I got to think on this one. Um, <laughs> most of mine are just geared towards annoying my family now. Um, so Army of Darkness, you found me beautiful once. Like I say that all the time. You found me beautiful once. And then <laughs> this is one I probably do daily. It's so annoying, but I love it. It's from Office Space. Um, Peter's Neighbor upstairs played by, oh, what's his name? He played Rex in uh, Napoleon Dynamite. Rex Quando, but his neighbor, he's a construction worker. He's really chill. He's laid back. <laughs> he goes over to the main character's house and goes, man, I got to get my ass up at 6 a.m. this whole week. 
I'm putting the drywall in at the new McDonald's. I say that every fucking day, but I try to like sprinkle it in organically, you know, like, <laughs> hey man, like my wife, like, hey, did you hear what? I gotta get my ass up at 6 a.m. this whole <laughs> shut oh the fuck God. up. It's not funny. I'm like, I know. <laughs> You're like, it's funny to me. Yeah, it's just funny because it annoys them. So <laughs> um, I have two that I say a lot. I'll say the first one. You guys gotta guess what movie it's from. She could be a farmer in those clothes. Um, um, <laughs> oh, fuck. Is it Jennifer's body or something? Is it horror? Clueless. Oh, and then I okay. say this one to Joe all the time when he tries to, like, make stuff happen. Like, oh. that doesn't matter. <laughs> thought we were getting dirty, but. Dirty. Yeah, we do. <laughs> maybe, it, maybe she still means that. So. Maybe. Stop trying to make fetch happen. It's never uh, going to happen. Mean girls. <laughs> mm-hmm. Lindsay Lohan classic. It's a great one. Uh, I don't know. I'm drawing a blank. Sam, is there anything I, I reference you can think of? No, Joe Moore, he sings songs rather than I quote, do. quote movies. Mm-hmm. Like, he'll just sing one line and then fucking five minutes later, I'm singing the song and I'm like, were you just singing this? Like, <laughs> yeah. He just like, yeah, he does that all the time. Mm-hmm. This is true. Sometimes if like, I do say clever girl a lot, Jurassic Park. Nice, yeah. <laughs> I've never heard you say that. Maybe not to you. Oh, oh, damn. Damn. oh damn. All right. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> what girls are we talking to? Uh, jump? Exactly, not me. <laughs> no, just the, like, like the supermarket, <laughs> they check them out. Clever girl. Like, what? No, just other was, girlfriends. I do. I say me and my friends use it a lot in the group chats <laughs> get a life <laughs> um I, I do a lot of non-horror uh, especially arnold schwarzenegger quotes with my wife sometimes because it just makes me laugh Arnold's uh, great. I, I, yeah, he's got so many great one-liners <laughs> as far as horror goes though i would say i i do say sometimes uh i myself and i'm strange and unusual mm-hmm. uh, which is mm-hmm. do you guys know during yeah, yeah, job interviews juice. you say that Feel juice. yes <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I, lately, from what we do in the shadows, I say a lot. Uh, this fucking guy. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> I've been this using that a lot lately. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, nothing too much in the horror genre, but what's in a box once in a while? Because mm-hmm. my my wife fucking five different delivery trucks came up today, <laughs> not a single one for me. <laughs> so yeah, I'll definitely uh, say what's, what's in, the in the box. Right. Uh, all right. Next question. Morgan Freeman hasn't done much horror. Would you like to see him get back into it? And what subgenre would he thrive in? Hey, man, Morgan's had a long, illustrious career. I don't think he has to prove anything to anyone <laughs> at this point. <laughs> you know, would I love to see him come back? Yeah, but, he, but you know what? He's pretty old now. I think he's he's done his, uh, it's in his twilight years. His time, yeah. It's time for him to sail off and just enjoy sail life. Sail off? Okay. To sail off and enjoy <laughs> life. <laughs> But I would like to see a sequel to um, uh, what was that one he did with uh, Jack Nicholson, where they both uh, old dogs or something like that. Bucket list, yeah, Yeah, bucket list too. Seen that? Is it good? I mean, not really. I I was gonna say it was better in concept than uh, execution. Yeah, I was being facetious. Oh well, to go back real quick to the movie quote. So I never knew what movie the What's in the Box is from. I always thought it was from like the gift or something or um the tom cruise m- movie show me the money i thought it was from oh, either one of those two yeah i never show is it called the gift the yeah i never realized and then when he was saying it i was like my whole life just came Here's... together in that moment of time like i remembered every person i've ever known in life to say that movie they all just kind of said it and i just looked at you and you're like because you're i came alive Uh, i was like oh this is what it is (laughs) my head explodes (laughs) i wanted to send memes to the chat but i didn't want you to get spoiled so i had to resist i got spoiled because i could already tell the whole movie but whatever it's fine sam just got a clairvoyant over here he does yeah (laughs) Mm -hmm. it's my magical power oh Speaking of magical powers, I can't, I can probably do it on video, but I've been doing magic card, magic card tricks to my family nonstop. So I've been looking at YouTube <laughs> and it's, I, their friends hey, come Daddy. over. Yeah, their friends come over. I'm like, I'll go up. Oh, what was that? You wanted to see some magic? <laughs> <laughs> my daughter's just like, oh my God. And I just fucking grab a deck of cards and 
it's fine. Uh, does your daughter have a friend who like enjoys that? And she's like, man, your dad is so funny. Like, yeah, show us the tricks. Yeah, I hear her say shit under her breath, like, oh my God, these green beans are good. Even though it has nothing to do with fucking <laughs> my, my comedy. Yeah. But I'll do like, oh man, the star will tell you she farted. <laughs> it makes her <laughs> laugh and stuff. That's how oh. I would be that friend. I was always the one that like loved the parent jokes and I would just yeah. be like, you are so funny. Tell me something more. <laughs> Make me laugh. Oh, that's good. Sam, also, would, Todd, would Todd be the hot dad? If he like went over at the sleepover? Ooh. Yeah, Todd would be the one of the hot dads. All right. <laughs> um, but wait, right. going back to Confidence magic. Just shot up. <laughs> All right, Todd. Wait, going back to magic, which I wanted to bring this in earlier. Um, so by the time you guys hear this episode, well, it's Steve's birthday week. So happy birthday to Steve. Birthday boy. Thanks. <laughs> Do you Thirty-nine have spankings. Plans? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go see uh, Malignant. Um. You know, I didn't really want to. But oh, really? It. Yeah, I have personal issues with it, but uh, I'm going to see it because the podcast for the podcast and people want us to review it. So dedication. I'll, I'll bite the bullet on this one, but I was just pissed off that. What are your personal issues? Like someone. No, it's because it's free in the US on HBO Max, oh. but mm. you can't get it on HBO in Canada. Mm. So but I have to go like pay on, like $40 guys. to see it. You know, and that's. Show Canada some love. It, it's more like it. just like, it's not the, about the money, it's more about the you know kind of steve's trying to save for his retirement god damn it yeah, right. <laughs> do, you blame, like... do you blame them though or do you blame your own country because don't doesn't your country have laws about like certain it, like so, content no, well, it, it's it's kind of two things uh they sold the right wb sold the rights to a canadian distributor mm-hmm. and they're they're not releasing it so, okay. so it's kind of two ways wb could have kept the rights and put it on hbo and put it on hbo in canada but instead they sold it to another like competing one that isn't releasing it so that so it's both of them are assholes <laughs> in my opinion um so yeah so i'm seeing malignant and then we're having sushi and then watching whatever movie i want she said so that's a very dangerous Ooh. proposition that my oh. wife made <laughs> so who knows what and I'm are gonna you gonna be watch. getting frisky after so. <laughs> uh, we'll see you yeah, probably not because i'll be full from the sushi yeah. but <laughs> morning after morning after yeah or morning off so we'll see or oh. yeah it's like or before. <laughs> yeah. nice all right <laughs> and probably go swimming as well because it's probably my last chance <gasps> before it gets too cold mm. that's uh mm. i think we're gonna uh, get the pool closed next week i'm jealous do a cannonball for me would you <laughs> definitely will um next question sam what's for dinner um I'm just say I don't want to eat anything in this movie universe. <laughs> I was actually eating. Well, Joe and I were both eating while we were watching this movie, and was I was spaghetti? like, "Spaghetti." No, Ooh. I was eating rice and grilled vegetables. Um, I don't. I don't know. I'm. I wasn't thinking about it. Um, what about some lasagna that is crisp on the top layer? It's kind of like dead skin, like mm. rotting flesh. Gross. <laughs> Are these supposed to be good or bad? <laughs> hey, Just whatever you want. It's your meal. Yeah. What does Chuck want? How about, I'm going to say, how about a, a glass of wine in an unclassy oh, glass yeah. like Brad poured uh, Morgan there? Yeah. <laughs> like a Flintstones cup or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah, I think you just got to go to a diner and get some like greasy bacon and greasy oh fried eggs. Oh my god, that fucking breakfast Coffee. scene! I was like drooling. It looks so good. I was like, oh my gosh, get in my belly now. Guys had his face in the bowl of spaghetti for forty-five minutes. Unless he's breathing spaghetti, he did. <laughs> <laughs> I love that line. Uh, last question before we have a few later for seven specifically is from Weezerface. What's your favorite of the seven deadly sins? Not just from this movie, but in life. What's my favorite sin? I'll go, I'll go straight up. Lust. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Well, like it's the most fun out of the seven, I guess. I don't as know. Long eat, as you're... eat until you're fucking pieces. Feel like a piece <laughs> of shit. Tell them, Todd. <laughs> Tell them, Todd. Yeah, we, just like... Both? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, I agree. <laughs> all right so uh, thank you everyone for the questions God, what were you thinking about eating i saw your face yeah, I would, <laughs> you I literally don't... was thinking about eating something no, i saw you'll, you'll fucking tell me to edit it out so i'm not gonna say it what is it eat uh, while you're having too, sex 
or the e the it was, world. It was, was specific. It, it was specific to Joe and Sam. I'm like Joe's eating fucking pizza with ranch on Sam and dipping it. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. If you he must know, like ranch though. You don't like ranch. I like it, but it's not definitely not my favorite. I put hot hot sauce is my go to. I put hot sauce on like everything. Gross. <laughs> I get some ranch. Hey, ranch is all right. I, I'm not gonna say no to ranch. I mean, if Sam put it Why on her nipples, I'd lick say it no off. To ranch. <laughs> ranch oh on God, ran, ranch is like a sexual item. It's kind of gross sounding. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, I think the only sexual item you can do is like chocolate or whipped cream. Yeah, something like sweet. Mm-hmm. Something sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like people putting cheese and shit on each other. <laughs> no, no. Ew. Cheese whiz. No, it has to be like sweet <laughs> or, stuff. What about a grease, greasy strangler? Just... That's true. <laughs> no, thanks. Really grapefruit. Yes. <laughs> and on that note, a word from our sponsor. Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. There's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds coffee is my guilty pleasure. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. What watched? Joe, why don't you talk about that Texas Frightmare weekend there, buddy? Yeah. All righty. All right. So, yeah, I went down to... Texas Fright Mount weekend with um a coworker actually. Uh he was going like in last minute. I was like, fuck it, I'll just go down too. So I booked a last minute flight. And let's talk guy? about this. He is, I wouldn't say a huge horror guy, but he's definitely a horror guy. He does listen to the podcast. So Mike, if you're listening now, what's up? Shout out to Mike. Um, shout out to Mike. Yes. So yeah, he's like he's more of like a big comic book fan, but he does like horror as well. So he does do like a lot of comic cons and stuff like that too. So Texas Framer Weekend. First thing I want to talk about is skip lagging or hidden city flying. Has anyone ever heard of this? Are you gonna get arrested for talking about this show? <laughs> no. No, no, because I've already done it. So now it's like okay. out and about. Uh, okay, so FBI. uh I decided to go very last minute. I booked my flight wet, literally on Wednesday, flying out Friday. So obviously booking a last minute flight like that. Uh, so yeah, it would have cost me about 550 bucks for a round trip uh, flight down to Dallas. So I was like, well, fuck that. And I really was not even going to go. And then my coworker, Mike was like, well, have you ever heard of this thing called skip lagged? And I'm like, no, what the fuck is that? So here is what you do. And I will say caveat mTOR to anyone else who would like to try this because uh, it is highly frowned upon by the airlines, but it is not illegal or anything like that. Um, but technically, you are breaking their uh, like breach of quote unquote contract when you do do this. That's in their user terms. So basically, here's what I did. And you can go on their website, skip lag, just look up skip lag. Do they have a website? So what I did was I, instead of booking a quote unquote round trip flight, I booked a layover flight. So what I did was I had a, on the way there, I flew Boston to Dallas. And then I was supposed to take a flight from Dallas to Florida. Um, and which you skip obviously that leg and you do the same thing on the way back. So on the way back, I flew Dallas to Boston. And then I was supposed to obviously lay over and go from Boston, from uh, Boston to New York. So obviously not direct flights, uh, are way cheaper. So it saved me about $250 by doing it that way. Um, a really smart idea. Uh, the only thing you can't do is you can't check bags, obviously, because they would be going to their final destination. So as long as you're just like bringing on a backpack, it worked totally fine for me. Um, I definitely was flagged though, because when I went to check in on the way back home, I could not pick up uh, check in online and I couldn't print out my boarding pass, like through a kiosk, I had to actually go to the agent. And when I went to the agent, she like pulled it up on the computer and she goes, Oh, and she like points at her computer and she brings over like another woman. And this she's like, motherfucker. and she's like, what am I supposed to like do here or whatever? And the lady's like, Oh, you have to ask him like where his final destination is and like where he's going. And she's like, okay, so what's your final destination today? I'm like, Oh, I'm going to New York. 
And she's like, oh, okay. And then like, she talked to the woman again and she's like, so you're going to New York. That's your final destination. I said, yeah, yeah. LaGuardia. And she's like, okay. And then she like printed it out and that was it. So it does work. Um, but obviously there are risks involved. So, I mean, What's would I risk, do it though, again? If it's not, you, you need to check there, that bag. <laughs> <laughs> check that back <laughs> motherfucker check that bag. yeah put your money where your mouth is uh the risks are they could um you know you technically it, tell you you can't fly like because you're broke their things but it's like a to- like how do they prove it right like they can't really you prove can have it. a family they have they have attempted to sue people in the past yeah. and it's never worked the lawsuits have always been thrown out of court um, but they said basically, uh, well, from what I read is if you just do it like two or three times a year, like you're not, years, yeah. you know, you're not kicking up a fuss over it. You know what I mean? So would I do it again? Yeah, I would. The only big risk that I read is that sometimes they do like, um, like re-divert flights. So they're like, oh, well, we're for the layover. Now you're going like here instead of like, you know, your destination you wanted to go to. So that could fuck you over. But if I had to do it, I I would do it again if it was like a super last minute flight like that. So, you know, like I said, caveat, but it worked out great for me. Uh, Save me a few hundred bucks. I got it. So (laughs) I want to go to Dallas. So I book it to California. They stop in Dallas. I never leave. Yes, exactly. Uh, Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dirty, dirty rat. <laughs> <laughs> did your coworker do that too? No, he didn't. No, he had he already booked his, he did it legit because he had booked his <laughs> like a f- couple months ago or something like that. But anyway, so let's get into Texas Frightmare Weekend. So I, I did my shady practice of getting down to Dallas. And uh yeah, I mean, so the con was great. Um, it was way smaller this year, obviously due to uh COVID protocols and stuff like that. So I would say it was about maybe half the size it normally is uh a lot less vendors obviously like way more spread out the vendor tables and stuff and they cut like definitely some uh like aisles and whatnot to accommodate the mo- the bigger space and stuff like that so that was a bit of a bummer um but uh the big plus of that was they only sold like 50 percent of their normal tickets so it wasn't like crowded at all Um, There were some long lines, but all of them were like manageable, like even like the longest line, the longest you maybe were waiting was like maybe an hour and a half, two hours for like a a big time guest. Uh, So yeah, so anyway, uh, I was able to meet uh, Damien Maffei, who has been a a good friend on the show, I was able to chat with him, hang out with him. Uh, I mean, he is just as great of a guy. Uh, as he is, you know, ba- online, he's just as cool and awesome uh, in person as well. So I, I really thank Damien for being so uh, gracious and kind uh, to me while being at the con. And he's super excited for the signing. Um, also, I don't think we mentioned it on the show yet, but uh, we a- also added a new event as well um, to that day on October 16th. Uh, Cinema Salem is going to be doing a screening of Haunt which is going to be following the signing at 8 p.m. Eastern. Tickets have not gone on sale for that yet. Uh, I'm still waiting to hear back from the cinema of when that's going to happen, but I will definitely update you guys um, with that as well. But yeah, I mean, overall, the con was great. Uh, I ran into a few um, people I was down there who were listeners of the podcast and people who uh, were, are in my horror group or are over on Facebook. So it was great to chat with them. Um, definitely pimped our podcast a lot while I was down there throwing down cards at, uh, random locations and, uh, put them behind, uh, hand sanitizing stations and shit like that. So hopefully it will get, uh, some, uh, get, get us some, a few new listeners that way. Um, but yeah, it was great. I met some, uh, great celebrities. I got, uh, in costume photo op with Tony Todd, uh, which was amazing. He looked so good, like in his Candyman costume and like actually getting to see like someone like in costume like that. Like, I don't think I've ever really done that before that I can think of like an in costume photo op like that it is to so cool. Uh, it is so awesome. Uh, and I also did uh, Damien in costume. I was the only person who requested he take his mask off for the picture, um, which was funny. And, uh, but that, that was really fun. Uh, met the legendary uh, Tom Atkins, who surprisingly had one of the longest lines uh, all weekend at the con, um, which I thought was great for him. Uh, and he was super nice, super awesome dude. I got uh, a poster signed for Sam uh, for him. Uh, great Halloween 3 poster, great artwork on that. Uh, met 
Savini because like, man, I've had like so many opportunities to meet Savini and I've always passed on it. And then this time I was just like, fuck it. Like I, I got to meet this guy. You know, he's like a legend. Like how can I not meet him? And I just don't want to regret it. Like I've regretted meeting other celebrities in the past and whatnot. So met Savini. He was, you know, he was okay. He's Savini, you know, I think most people always say, you know, he's kind of like, yeah, whatever. And he was kind of that way. <laughs> Uh, to me, he wasn't like bad or anything. He just wasn't like maybe the most, you know, friendly or welcoming person, but he was still cool. Um, but the, the, probably the nicest celebrity I met was definitely, um, uh, the actor who plays Guillermo, uh, Harvey Guillen, I think is his name. Um, from what we do in the shadows, he was so, so nice. Um, so awesome. Surprisingly did not have a long line. I thought his line was going to be like huge because the show is so popular right now i walked right up to his table like I, I was like shocked but uh super nice super welcoming guy and uh i mean i'm probably forgetting things but i mean it was a great time i just love going to cons it was so great to be back um for me purse oh i also met d wallace too um and i had her sign a cujo figure um made by homemade horror steve yeah one of your guys she had him on his table um so it was very it was very cool i'll have to send a picture to you guys i'll put it in the, up in the discord um but yeah it was it, it was a great time and uh yeah i can't wait to go to more cons now it like definitely reinvigorated my uh love of like cons and wanting to go back so yeah yeah, I, I personally think they shouldn't have them right now. <laughs> I think that's why. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Um, no, it was I so... had a lot of fun in mine, but yeah, so crowded. At least mine was. It wasn't managed well mm -hmm. space-wise. and Yeah, I will say this one was managed well space-wise. And like pretty much er everyone was wearing masks. I will say like after like a certain time, I'd say around like five, six o'clock, like everyone's masks came down yeah. um yeah. which you know it's just like okay well i guess like was there a funk but, uh, uh texas not funk honestly, it was hot. Not, i mean it was hot dude it was like 96 degrees down there um but no i i didn't really get like that normal con funk we usually get um <laughs> which i guess was good i think because it was less people like it was it wasn't packed in like sardines like normal which i i think that is like the best part like about like capping tickets and stuff like that um for the most part most celebrities were like not masked up for pictures and i didn't see many dividers there were a couple um number one being um nancy keys from halloween um fame she was had her mask on the entire time and she had a uh a big like barricade over same with Malcolm McDowell. He was like completely behind plexiglass. Like, honestly, if you took a picture like that, it would have looked like terrible. Uh, who else? Uh, Dylan McDermott definitely had like a big, he did was not mass, but he had like a massive space, like in between you. So I think to me, like I wouldn't meet people like that just cause like that experience and getting a picture like that was just like, but for like all the other ones, Savini did have plexiglass in him, but like when we both got like really close to the plexiglass, it's almost like on like identifiable unrecognizable that we were in between plexiglass uh you can see it over on my instagram i posted it but yeah i mean for me personally i uh i can totally understand the concerns though for sure todd sounds like a good time though no it was it, it was it was a lot of fun did you and, get uh, tony todd's autograph i did not no i only did the in, in costume Candyman photo op um mainly because his line was probably the longest out of anyone which was like to me a bit surprising, I guess, because the can't obviously Candyman movie just came out. So, like that, like, re but I've been to like cons where he doesn't have a line at all. So, like, I mean, good for him, good on him, obviously. Like, this new Candyman obviously like reinvigorated uh, people wanting to meet him and stuff like that. And, uh, but yeah, that's why I, I didn't decide to go yeah, for him. I'm only asking, same with Danny because, Trejo. Uh, I wanted to meet Trejo, but he he's, he's small in <laughs> person. I don't know if you saw him uh, up close, but. He's a lot oh, smaller. Yeah, 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 he is. I, I saw him. Like, so his, yeah, when I did uh, the photo op with Damien, he was the photo op right before. So, like, he walked, like, right in front of me. And he is, like, a really short guy. Yeah. He's, like, the same height as me. Yeah. And the reason I was asking about Tony Todd is because on last week's episode, while I was editing it, I noticed that you said, if I ever meet Tony Todd again, I'm 100% going to get his autograph. So, and then you go to Texas Frightmare, meet Tony yeah, Todd, and don't yeah, get and his it didn't autograph. Work out. <laughs> but yeah, I get yes. it. The line the sometimes. Picture yeah. will last forever, I mean, though. so the fact, yeah. yeah, at least I got like the in costume photo op. So that's how I could like excuse it. But yeah, maybe another. I just did not feel like waiting in long lines like that nice. that weekend. So I get it. that's why I, yeah, skipped, I, this time. I skipped a con this weekend. Or I'm house. sure I'll have another opportunity. <laughs> yeah, Cincinnati, right? Uh, oh, were you supposed to go? Uh, yeah, but you know, time got away from me, and then I was like, 
the last con was so crammed. I don't really feel like getting risking <laughs> getting fucking sick again because it sucked. But uh, yeah, my, my buddies went though. They said they had a really good time, and it was better than horror, uh, the last one because they managed space better. So that's good. Nice. Todd, got any what watch? Yes, I do. Um, my first one is, I believe it's a 2020, 2021 release. Um, currently on Shutter, I believe both Steve and Joe watched this one called Caveat. Uh, I believe it's an English film. Um, and basically, yeah, this guy's like, hey, can you take care of my daughter? She doesn't have, or not daughter, my niece. She doesn't have anybody. Her parents are gone. She lives uh, in this secluded cabin that's literally in the middle of a lake, like a little island. Um so already shady, right? And we got the shady characters and then they take him to the island and he's like, oh, by the way, you got to wear this fucking harness and we're going to latch it to you with like, um, you know, padlocks and then, you know, secure you to the ground and you can't take it off because you can't go in the niece's room physically because it's like the, the chain isn't long enough and hey, she's going to have the key. And by the way, she fucking walks around with a crossbow. So don't get shot. Um, caveat, I really love the premise. I love the creepy bunny thing. But I felt like it kind of lagged a little bit in the middle there. And I thought they should have got to the stuff that was effective quicker and then lasted longer. There was this dead body that was in the wall. I won't give you give it away who it was or why they're there because it's a plot point. But it and then it happens fairly often. So that's not like a mystery. But it's super creepy, extremely well shot. And then a scene with that body later on is like, holy shit, this is terrifying. But it doesn't last long enough, you know, and it took so long to get there and it kept switching back from the guys in peril or mortal danger. Now the girl's in mortal danger. Oh, wait, there's a twist now where this guy isn't who he seems he is. Oh, there's a brother thrown in. So there's like too much going on. I thought they could have made it a little bit um, like a tighter story and it would have been great. So it was still pretty good. I give it like a solid seven. Um, but yeah, nothing amazing. So caveat on Shutter. Yeah, I, I agree with everything you said there. Uh, this that that body scene might be my favorite this year of like so all good. the movies. It's just so well done. It's just yeah, you're right. They didn't have enough of that. So. No. Sam, did you watch anything uh, this week? Um. Yeah, I only have one to talk about. So I continued on with American Horror Story, the next episode, and I thought it was better than the last one. So with this one, we kind of get the backstory on, um my two favorite characters, which are Austin played by Evan Peters, and then also Sarah played by Francis Conroy. Um, so we get the backstory of why these two people decided to take the pills that the chemist is offering. And just to kind of like sum it up real quick, pretty much um, Sarah's character, she's a very well-known author and she started writing like these really amazing romance novels. And she went to this town to just get inspiration. And she was also doing a book signing and only three people were there. And like, she was with her husband who ended up spending all of his retirement to help her write these books. And he was really mad and just held a lot of resentment because she wasn't becoming rich like he had hoped she would. And he was also just like a really big dick to her. And she was very quiet and just like scared of everything. So she finally takes the pill and then she ends up writing like all these amazing books because she's already talented, which we kind of talked about how the pill works. And then with Evan's character, he was doing... Um, was it screenplay? I can't remember off the top of my head, but he was doing these like weekend drag shows just to make a little bit of cash. And all of the drag queens were making fun of him saying he wasn't that great and he wasn't talented. And obviously that wasn't what he wanted to be doing with his time. It was just something to like pay the bills. And he was actually like a really good performer. And then you see that Sarah gives him the pill and introduces him to that. He could be like, even though he's already talented, he could ha be rich and make money from his passions and stuff like that. Um, but it was a really good episode to learn like the backstories and it was one of my favorite episodes. Good. That's episode four, right? So you're... Um, that is episode... Is it four? I feel like it would be five. Oh, really? um what's today's i don't know i can't tell steve all right well so it's still impressive that you're that far in and don't hate it yet so that's a, that's we'll a good see. sign you're wearing a brain dead shirt sam yeah it's joe's old shirt oh cool it's my shirt now 
he's my family now. Nice. Wait, she's my family now. Jedi. What's that from? It should be one of your trivia questions. Oh, Black Christmas, oh. come on. Jedediah. <laughs> I'm wearing a oh. The Beyond shirt. Jedediah. That's never seen it. Great movie. Nice. One of Fulci's best. Yeah, for sure. Uh, all right, so for the next month at least i'm going to be talking about screeners because we got a whole bunch of them uh, it's just that time of year with halloween coming up so uh, i'm going to talk a lot of new films uh, so the, the well i'm going to talk one of the two tonight is a 2021 film of course and it's called fun house so in this one eight influencers are uh, chosen by a production company to uh, go on to a reality show uh, but they don't know that they get drugged into it and then wake up in a house, kind of like the Big Brother Halloween house. Resurrection. What? No Halloween Resurrection. No. Hmm. Oh, that would be in trivia. No, <laughs> Fun House. It's called. <laughs> if anything, it's Saw Two. But anyway, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> so yeah, so these eight influencers are drugged and brought into a house, and they're put onto a reality show where the winner wins a, a bunch of money, but it's only one person that can survive the house. And the way it works is that every few days, the internet votes who is the most popular and they rank them one to eight. And the person who is the least popular of the week uh, goes into a challenge that can either kill them or they can pass, you know, if they do succeed at the challenge, it passes on to the person above them. So the seventh person would go instead. And that's how the show works. So every uh, couple of days, they kill somebody off. So then it's there's like two interesting interesting things happening. One is what the contestants do in the house to impress the people online uh, to try to get bigger votes, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, taking their clothes off or, uh, you know, doing relations, like re re having relationships with different people in the house to try to boost their popularity and stuff like that. And on the flip side, you have their fight to the death, which is honestly better than I expected. Uh, a bunch of stuff happens. I won't spoil it because it's still new. But honestly, it was a fun film. You know, not, not great, not bad. Uh, just a fun one-time watch, I would say. It reminded me a lot of Saw 2. Like a lot, they're trying to work together, uh, trying to figure out the, uh, the clues to the, to the different battles and stuff. But uh, yeah, it was pretty good. So if you can watch it, it's called Fun House. And I believe it's already on VOD. I forgot to mention that Damien gave us all shit on uh, at, at Texas Frightmare. He was like, he introduced me to somebody. He's like, oh, yeah, this is Joe, a horror squad. He's like, I've been on their show twice. And he's like, but he's like, every time I go, every time uh, I go on to promote my movie, they, they always give like my movie shitty ratings. No, we don't. We, like, <laughs> we all like, like Tom. <laughs> I know. I told him. He was just giving us shit. But I, he was like, he only <laughs> gave it a seven. He's like, come on. I was like, I was like, man, it's like, it's, it's a good movie. I was like, I will say though, I even told him this and I wasn't just bullshitting him. The more times I've watched Haunt, the more time, the like more I've enjoyed it. So yeah. Yeah, to tell him to make more Haunt and less fucking Nun's Curse, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got, he's got a, I'm, I'm going. Uh, he's got, a, he's filming yeah. a new movie uh, called, uh, God, some, the, God, I should probably like know this before I. It's, it's not Time's Sorry. Up for one of those. No. Uh, I think he filmed that already. Oh, I'm going to tell you right now. Okay. So he's filming a new movie called uh, The Events Surrounding a Peeping Tom, where he is going to be playing the lead, um, directed by uh, Hannah Fearman, who you guys might know from uh, VHS fame, of course. Um, but yeah, and I'm going to be featured in uh, a diner scene. Uh, so I'm going down to uh, Connecticut uh, at the end of this month. So keep an eye out for that movie. If you want to see me in the background eating a bagel or something like that, I'll, I'll be in there. <laughs> nice. Exciting. All right. Horror World Tour via Letterboxd. This one's from Slovenia. So my first horror movie from Slovenia. This is called Kill Billies, currently streaming on Tubi in the U.S. And it is basically a Hills of Eyes knockoff. Um, there's models, and they go up to the, uh, I guess, the forest of Slovenia to do some do a shoot and then come across hillbillies uh, this is what they call them so i'm gonna use that word as well come across hillbillies that are like selling moonshot and things like that automatically right off the bat like they get attacked by like some disfigured hills of ice people essentially uh, they capture them torture them um, you know almost rape one of them kill the dude things like that so basically it's just like people trying to run from these hillbillies the entire movie it's um nothing groundbreaking i think i gave it like a two or something out of five on letterboxd 
Um, it is really cool though to see a film from a country that you normally wouldn't. So Slovenia, you never even think of stuff from there. So that's a, it's a good effort. It's got some great gore in it, some really cool effects. The acting is serviceable, but my biggest hang up is the, um, the music. It's like, um, if I, if you told me like they got their music from like random Google stock searches, then I would believe it because it's so like, um, stagnant and like elevator music and like it's like they googled hard rock and then they first thing that popped up they took it and put it in the bar scene it was like over and over and over again same thing um but a good effort you know i'm interested in the director i forget his name i probably can't pronounce right anyway but he made a dracula movie that i'm going to look forward to watching and yeah so Sabinia is off the list so i'm happy to have that so my second one is another screener and this one is a documentary uh, from this year it actually releases the day this podcast goes live and that's Boris Karloff, the man behind the monster. Um, we've talked about in the past that I think for all of us, or at least most of us, uh, like the kind of 1950 and before era, we don't, are, are, we're not super familiar with uh, outside of maybe just the Universal Monsters. Uh, of course, Boris Karloff, known mostly for playing Frankenstein's monster. Um, so it goes basically, it's a documentary about his life focusing mainly on his career and even more specifically on his horror uh, films. You know, they do mention his films that were outside of horror, but the main focus of this is horror. And it was just a really interesting movie. Um, didn't have any like kind of groundbreaking information in here that uh, either I didn't know or that is like, well, okay, wow, that's crazy. But uh, still a very entertaining documentary. Uh, you get to hear from a lot of people within the industry who talk about his influence and uh, how the makeup was important and everything. And uh, he ta they talk about his friendships with people like Vincent Price and, uh, you know, Lon Chaney Jr. and stuff like that. Uh, just, it's, it's, a, it's a solid documentary. And if you like that era, I know we have a few listeners who do. Uh, I would recommend this um, this uh, this movie, this documentary. So it's Boris Karloff, the man behind the monster. Trivia, trivia, get them trivia questions out, y'all. This is week number game number thirty five. Currently, Steve holds on to first place, eighty seven points, eighty seven. Myself, second place, eighty four. Joe, eighty three. Sam, fifty seven. Like I said, this is game number thirty five. Any man or woman's game still. Um, who would like to lead off? Not me. <clears throat> not Sam. Not Samantha. I'll lead. I'll lead. Did, hold All on. Right. Sam, do you need some time to get some questions so you can focus on answering? Just give me 45 seconds. All okay. Right. Well, I'll tell a quick story. So uh, I went to the uh, Candyman panel when I was at Texas Frightmare Weekend. And, uh, of course, we had a hotly contested debate a few weeks ago uh, <laughs> during our Candyman beasting question. Um, actually it might have even have been last week. I can't remember, but, uh, so, uh, can't, uh, Tony Todd did confirm it was 28 stings. So he, I can't said, remember. This, he said three different answers himself. He, so. Yes. He, he himself, but then he, they asked him again. They're like, Oh, so it was 28. And he's like, uh, maybe it was 27. He's like, I don't really remember. He's like, but it was, he's like, it was somewhere in that ballpark, but it was like someone, uh, even, uh, during the Q and a was like, they're like, well, they're like, wouldn't you remember since you got paid a thousand dollars a bee sting? Like, wouldn't you remember like the exact do dollar amount? He's like, yeah, it was, he's like, it was like 30 years ago and I put it in my kid's college fund. So I don't really remember. So the, the myth can, the legend continues on how many times he actually got stung, but he did mention he got stung in the penis a couple times Ooh. that the bees went down his pants. So, oh my gosh, ouch. <laughs> yes. All right. I wish I could come up with like a little bee, bee candy man, little like pun. Like a wiener bee pun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nothing comes to mind though. That's some honey. Mm. Ah, that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Although, come on, Todd, come on, Dad, <laughs> you're supposed to be good with this. Well, I'm not, I, I don't do Dad penis jokes. That's a little <laughs> too far, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great point. <laughs> Although when I was like 17, my dad did do the penis in the box joke to me. What's that? Dick in a box. Never seen that video. Yeah. It's my your, dick in a box. Your dad did that to you? I was like 17, 18, something like that. He's like, hey, look what I found in the yard. I'm like, what is it? And he had his a actual box. dick? It was his fucking dick in a box, dude. <laughs> no, I thought I thought the finger, like, the box. No, it was like, fucking That's what weird. I thought. But he, he fully oh, committed gross. to the joke. Yeah. That, is, that is fully committing. It's a... yeah, that's a wow. slippery slope. Yeah. Um, Sounds like it. What was I going to say now? Before I ruin the mood. <laughs> Uh, all right, just say your trivia question. 
All right, Sam, you ready? I'm ready. Well, I'm not. Cause all right. Good. I'm, I'm ready. I'll go with mine. Yeah. So, all right. So this was mentioned during the Candyman panel. So I decided Ooh. to put it into my trivia question for this week. So Ooh. Tony Todd starred uh, in three Candyman movies. I'm not counting the remake because, you know, it was more of a cameo appearance. But um, he had mentioned that a fourth movie was on the table. Script was sent to him. He immediately turned this movie down. This fourth movie was Candyman versus Leprechaun. Leprechaun. You take too long. <laughs> you don't no, take too long too to say the goddamn long. question. I know. I'm like, I'm like, he's probably going to ask this, but let me make sure. <laughs> take too dang long. That'd be fun. I don't know how that movie so, would work. Like, but... they don't mix, yeah, they don't mix at all. Yeah. I mean, Tony Todd would just step on him and be over. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I'll go. These questions come from Kayla. Glad to have you back on the trivia, <laughs> providing us trivia, uh, doing my job pretty much. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what monster is summoned in the basement in the film, The Cabin in the Woods? Um, Zombie. Uh, it's a, the ghost? Demon. Joe got it. Zombie, redneck, torture family. Oh, oh yeah. I totally misunderstood yeah. your question then. Oh, Darn you it. did? It wasn't your fault. It was my fault being I'm stupid. sorry, Todd. It's okay. That's you right. know, scrap that and no. let me go. No, no, no. I'm a damn point. point. I'm I'll just take the point. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Miss Walker. I'm going to call her Miss Walker. She's on the Discord. Sweetheart sent me a Instagram post. So here it is. Question. And... You know, I'm going to read the whole thing. Here's a trivia question for tonight that is shamelessly directed at Sam. So maybe she can get this oh. point. I'm scared. <laughs> and I know what you did last summer. What holiday are they celebrating in the car? Fourth of July. Ding, ding, ding. Got it. Nice, 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 nice. I didn't see I'm moving so long. What are you waiting for? <laughs> oh, God. All right, terrible. That's my girlfriend. So the uh, first it. question is from Weezer Face. Oh. Uh, I'm going to alter it a little bit because it's a little too specific, I think. <laughs> but uh, let's go. Which year did the first episode of The Walking Dead air? 2009. 2009's on the board. 2008. 2008 is on the board. 2010. And Joe gets the point. Fucking Joe. <laughs> Fuck you, Joe. You don't even watch the show. First episode was released uh, Halloween 2010. Nice. Great episode. Great, great Good first job, season. Joe. Thank you. All right. Back to me. Back to the homeboy. All right. This one comes to us from listener Katie. Katie. Woo woo. And her question is uh, I'll read her whole thing too. Ooh. So she watched the Ring remake. And she got a trivia question from it. So the actress who played Samara is famous for what Disney voice acting role? Mm. Ooh. Met her at a con. She's fucking hot. Oh, she's hot now? There. She's hot. Okay. Well, she was hot. Wait, who? Oh, um, okay. I was thinking you were talking about. Wait, isn't she young, Todd? Not now. Oh. The movie's like. She wasn't young in the ring either. Yes, yeah, she was. No, Samara? I'm talking about- is she uh, Merida? Mara was the young girl that fell down the well. No, Mar- oh, Mar- 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 never, mind. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Revert. I cancel. <laughs> you're talking about me. from the closet. Yeah, Todd, you're going to get canceled. Don't cancel me, please. <laughs> I didn't mean it. Lilo and Stitch. Yeah, uh, yeah, that is correct. Wow. wow. She played, uh, she was the voice, of, she was the uh, voice of Lilo. Lilo had a voice? Mm-hmm. It's just it's like, yeah. like, oh, Stitch is the monster. Hawaiian yeah. is the monster. Yeah. Yeah. Lilo. <laughs> But he also he also has a voice. Does he? His little growls. I hate that movie. Come on. <laughs> all right, who's up? Sam. Sam or right. Sam tonight. Let's all right. You guys ready? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is gonna be a quick one, so be on your toes. All right. What is the real name of Buffalo Bill? Ooh. In the Silence of the Lambs. Oh, I thought you guys would all be yelling for this. Bill. William. 
Yeah, I'm gonna name. need a first and last name. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> William Smith. We got William Smith on the board. No idea. I yeah, I can't remember. I there was a great Buffalo Bill cosplay though at Texas Friday oh, yeah. this weekend. I sent you guys all a video of it. <laughs> great slash sister. <laughs> yep. The answer is James Gum. James oh, that's oh, right. Yeah, nice yes. one. Mm-hmm. Yep. Huh. Okay. All right. There's a Todd original. What kind of beer does Detective Sims in this movie drink? Who's Brad Pitt? Blue, uh, Blue Ribbon. Pap- Pap's Blue, Pap's Ribbon. Blue Ribbon. Fucking Sam's yeah, on it too. Damn. Day. It. Damn. Yeah. Holy shit. PBR, man. PBR is not bad. Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> got to hit. He's got to hit just right. You got to have some like, cheap pizza or something. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Uh, so... It this up. is still from uh, Wizard Face. Oh. What film ranked number one most gruesome movie disease of all time by Total Film Magazine in February 2013? Kevin, Kevin Fever. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that yeah. was a great mm-hmm. guess, Todd. Yeah. Makes sense. What was your hint? All right. Uh, the, the year of the film. Oh. Back to Joseph. Right. Okay. Thanks. This one comes uh, also from uh, Miss Walker. Miss Walker. I really like the name Walker. Who also so. hopes Sam gets this question as well. So apparently okay. it's favoritism. Well, she here. doesn't need any uh, tonight. No. <laughs> uh, in Rosemary's Baby, what plant is a necklace she's given? I knew it. What is in the, what is in the necklace she is given it's by like, seed root or root. Rest of it. It's a weed. It root. is root, but I need the exact root that is given. Butt root. Oh, we've had this question dad before. Joe. We have. I think Joe asked this question. Gin root. I, I think sage, I may have. Sage root, but I don't remember. Root root. No, it is the correct answer is fig tan- root. Tannis <sighs> root. Tannis root. Doesn't that smell like shit too? Yeah, she did complain yeah. about the smell like throughout the whole movie. And oh, shout out to listener Katie who hey. gave me um, the uh, heads up about a very awesome Rosemary's Baby shirt that was uh, being sold at Texas Frightmare that I picked up. Was she there? For Sam and I. Mm-hmm. Was she there to con? Katie was not, no. But she saw it on Paul Bearer Press, mm-hmm. like, was, like, promoting it or whatever. So, yeah. But we did see Katie a few weeks ago. I don't think we talked about that on the podcast. Uh, I don't remember. But you can say it again. <laughs> no, it's fine. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. Hey, that's all I'll say. Did you meet anyone from the Discord? <laughs> Uh, no, I don't think I did. Mm-mm. No, unfortunately not. Cool. Maybe next time. All right. Did you meet my... any shop owners that forgot that they ran into you 500 times? Oh, uh, when they're like, you walk by them again and they're like, hey, buddy, you want to buy my socks? Right. Yeah, me. <laughs> All right. Okay. What month does the annual purge take place in, the, in the original purge film? We got July on the board. Hmm. Sounds like July would be the correct answer for 4th of July, right? Yeah. The new founding fathers, November. We got November on the board. August. We got August on the board. And the correct answer is March. March. Oh. Wow. Oh, All is right. that because when's our elect? No, our elections are in November. So that's original weird. purge film. Weird. Huh. Mm. Random. I feel like it changed every movie then. <laughs> yeah, because there's Christmas Possibly. music in the second one. Yeah. <laughs> it is friend. <laughs> All right. Let me pull up my thingy real quick from Kayla Weezerface. I will use yours next time. Thank you very much, though. Um, okay. In Child's Play. What was Charles Lee Ray, also known as, in the Child's Play movie? What's his serial killer name? Yeah. Oh, oh um, was it Charlie the... Ray. Charlie Ray's on the board. It's like the incorrect though. Is it like, it's like the, the lake... something mangler or the? Is it the Lakeshore Strangler? Yeah. Joe is correct. That's right. Yeah. Next door. Good job. Good job. Thank you. All right. Thank last question can... of the night. Yes, I mean it's guaranteed zeros for Steve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on my birthday episode, can't wait. Oh, <laughs> oh, come on. No one sent me good questions for, like, <laughs> for me to get points. They don't help us anymore. It's not fair. <laughs> Freaking Fuse uh, Face sounds like in 1923. This <laughs> all right, this one's pretty easy. So, all right, let's hear it. This need to be quick. This from is from uh, Michelle. So, thank you very much. What does Reagan say in The Exorcist to the astronaut at the party downstairs? 
your mother's you, no. you're gonna die yeah you're all gonna die see you in hell almost but not enough you're all gonna all right. die up there that's right todd gets me right. oh hey 100 percent guess all right, <laughs> all right todd. what a mean rotten little kid <laughs> it, it needs to be specific because he's talking about specifically going to space so. oh sam you're talking about my daughter's friend that likes me I, yeah. as you know a funny dad not trying to get creepy her <laughs> name is reagan oh that's oh. awesome you don't oh, cool. hear that name too often anymore. There's actually two Reagans on my street. Oh, really? Both really? Like one year of each other, yeah. There was a girl that I did dance team with. Her I don't name think was I've Reagan. ever met him, Reagan. Reagan, yeah. That's I wonder if they're name. exorcist fans. There's a Ripley at work <laughs> that her dad was an Aliens fan. I'm like, that's fucking cool. That's awesome, yeah. 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 Uh, all right. That ends the night. And Steve's still commanding first place uh, with 87. Joe and Todd are tied at second place, 86. Sam with a huge four on the board, 61 oh. points. What's that smell? Wow, this is great. Might be a comeback. You like that? Don't oh. call it a comeback. Call it a comeback. I need more zeros from Steve. All right. Mm. So, you guys ready to talk about seven? Yes. Let's do it. All right. Seven, directed by David Fincher, 1995. Two detectives, a rookie and a veteran, hunt a serial killer who uses the seven deadly sins as his motive. So this movie starts off with Morgan Freeman, who's literally seven days from retirement. He's been a police officer, a detective for 30 plus years, and he's just fucking tired of it. You know what I mean? He's older. He's fucking over it. He's done. But of course, he gets drug right back into this gruesome serial killer um, where the first killer he goes into is a large man that was tortured by being force fed over and over again until he literally burst. But he's got a new partner played by Brad Pitt, uh, Detective Sims, who, while he does have experience on the force, he's, uh, he said he was five-year detective in homicide. Not in this bad area, buddy. So Morgan Freeman's like, basically treats him like a rookie. Like, you don't know shit. This is brutal, whatever city. They, they play it to be like any city, large city in America, you know, New York, Chicago, whatever. So basically, you know, he thinks he's naive, whatever, treats him as a kid. Um, so the movie, you know, goes around discovering these bodies while Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman try to work their relationship out. Morgan Freeman's on the way out. Brad Pitt's like, you know what? Fuck you, dude. You're checked out. Let me take over the case. And then Brad or Morgan Freeman on the flip side is like, you don't know shit, dude. Get outside and do the, the grunt work while I work and stuff like that. Uh, we're introduced to Gwyneth Paltrow, who is Brad Pitt's wife in the movie. And, uh, you know, she's sad because she's in a new city. She wants to support her husband who wants to be a hotshot detective, be the hero. But she's fucking depressed because she knows nobody. Um, and she befriends Morgan Freeman, which is a really sweet scene. And uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. They're just trying to figure out who this killer is, why Morgan Freeman is trying to retire and Brad Pitt's trying to be hotshot. Um, yeah, you know, long story short, I really like this movie. It's one of the best crime thriller slash horror movies out there. Very uh, on par with Sansa Lambs. Um, saw it at a young age and it like instant impression because like those kills are fucking brutal. Um, and especially sloth like that's just ingrained in my mind especially when the SWAT guy's like you fucking deserved it and he fucking like ah, wakes up and you're like holy shit um but yeah all around solid movie uh, i do have some small problems just more nitpicking that we get to later but yeah seven uh solid sam first timer what you think all righty <clears throat> So first time watching this movie and I loved it. I will say, I don't know what it was, but it was like everything was just predictable to me. I don't know why. And I don't mean to say that to be like, oh, I knew it. It sucked. Like I still enjoyed it, but I think I just, it's like to the point you see so many things that when you go back to see this, you, you've already seen fucked up things. So you're imagining what's going to happen. I, um, but I'm sorry I, to cut you off real quick, Sam, but I yeah. think I read that too online. And I think it's because this movie kind of set the standard. Yeah. And everything after this has been like more or less a ripoff, you know? Yes. And so that yeah, it was predictable. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, but I really enjoyed watching it. Like I liked all of the scenes where, um, where they're both like in the, at the police station and you can see everyone behind them and it's like a wide shot of everything like that was one of my favorite scenes I also loved when um what's his character name Somerset Morgan Freeman's character was invited over to Mills's apartment to have dinner with his him and his wife I thought that 
scene was so just sweet and endearing and it was just kind of like an icebreaker and the start of their better work relationship um that scene that Todd was talking about I was not expecting that like right when the guy was like this is what you deserve and I'm like come on man he's dead like let it fucking relax bro um and then that person is like still breathing I was like so scared watching that I was like and I told Joe I was like all right well that's gonna be like burned in my brain for a while so creepy um I am usually not not that I'm not a fan of Brad Pitt but I've never been like oozing over him like a lot of people are but I really liked him in this movie although I felt like his pa- his him being impatient was really annoying to me but that's just him like he's he's not really young so why was he so impatient because he had been in this kind of work for a while right I don't know maybe I missed wanted to be something. a hot shot yeah. I guess so it's like relax you are you look great you don't need to be a hot shot in all categories um but I don't know. And I loved that we kind of realized that um, Mills's wife, Tracy, isn't really happy in the city and she's just kind of miserable, but she's trying to hang on for the love of her husband, you know? And what else do I have to say? I really hated, I just hate Kevin Spacey's fucking face. I hate it. Like, I hate that guy. It just, I literally wanted to like rip my fingernails off every time he talked, every time he had that stupid like shit smirk on his face. Um, But it was really good. Although I will say with the ending, I felt like I wanted something a little bit more. Like you gave me this whole platter of so many great things throughout the whole movie. But then at the end, I just see Mills in a car and Somerset's like, give him everything that he needs and it's like bye now I'm like can I just get a little bit more like where's your cabin gonna be at can I see you living your retired life in the cabin and then can I see what happens to Brad but I guess it kind of wants you to feel a little empty with him losing his wife which is really fucked up um so yeah I liked it a lot just a note it's in the extended cut if, uh, <gasps> it is it is yeah Really, Can you I didn't tell know me this. what happens. Um, the um, Somerset goes to so they cut a scene at the beginning of the film where Somerset has like a farmhouse that he bought for his retirement, and he's kind of just like putting stuff in there. And in the uh, extended cut, he sells the farmhouse to keep being a cop because he Aww. feels that he has unfinished business. Um, Mills, I'll talk about a little bit later because it's yeah directly related to the movie but uh, yeah that's what was that okay well that see yeah because I would even if it was like two minutes or something I'm like why did it have to be cut out but yeah I really liked it and I can't believe it's taken me so long to watch it all right I'll let the birthday boy go last um on this one uh so yeah I mean god it was I don't think it's any surprise I love this movie obviously it was in it was my number two of top 10 of the decade um for uh this decade and with good reason I mean it is to me it is the best crime like thriller of all time it surpasses sounds of the lambs for me um you know even though maybe anthony hopkins performance is better overall i just i just enjoy this movie more like the chemistry between brad pitt and morgan freeman is just fantastic in this like i love the just the arc that they they have together um in the movie um yeah i mean it just it felt really genuine like honestly the everyone's performances are great in this there's not like a anyone who does a bad job uh the kills are great or you know even though it, and it's pretty amazing because like you don't they're all like off screen right but then you kind of see like what happened to everyone and that alone is just like disturbing enough which like goes to show sometimes you, i guess you really don't need to see the kills for it to be um disturbing and uh, it works just the way they lay out the crime scenes in this are just all so well done and just feels really um, authentic in a lot of ways. Um, the mystery that's held about John Doe for the longest time, I think it was, it was great. Um, I really love the scene where they almost catch him, but he gets away. Uh, yeah. I mean, Kevin Spacey's performance in this as John Doe is great. Uh, I, I, I do disagree with Sam. I think the ending was, was perfect. I think the way it ended was, was, was perfect. I think 
leaving uh you know that the movie kind of open-ended to know like what happened to mills and whatnot i think leaves for a great discussion which i'm sure we're going to discuss later on in the show because you know there's several different ways that could have went and just that quote by morgan freeman at the end there the hemingway quote i thought was just like a, be- a beautiful way um to end the movie um can you tell yeah, us the I mean, quote joe it was um i knew you were gonna ask him the- <laughs> on the spot <laughs> i know you put me on the spot here why uh, can't you I'm- tell me the gist because i don't I don't remember. Yeah, it says, so I wasn't um, asking to. The, the world, the world is a beautiful place and worth fighting for. I agree with the second part. I think actually, I think I got it like perfect, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Right. Um, which I thought, I mean, and it's so true, right? Like, because the world can be a very ugly place, and that, but it is at times definitely worth fighting for. And I think that was a great way to to end it. And I mean, Fincher is obviously great. I'm a big fan of him. He's made a lot of fantastic movies. Um, looking at, I had never realized he was such a big music direct video director, um, before his career really took off. Um, Sam, he directed your girl, Paul Abdul straight up music video, which I know you would enjoy That's hearing. Why, that. Yeah. I saw his <laughs> name. I was like, why have I seen his name on uh, something so many times? He worked. So yeah, he worked with like Michael Jackson, Madonna, like all Aerosmith, like all the great, which I never knew before until, uh, I am beat him today. So I thought that was really cool, but I mean, he made so many, I mean, fight cl- like fight clubs, like one of my favorites as well. Um, and the social network was good, but he's done a lot of great stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's my thoughts for now. <laughs> um, well, obviously I picked it. So obviously I want to at the very least discuss it. I'm, I'm uh, sorry, Steve. I should have had you lead with it. No, it's fine. It's good. I can kind of finish off the thoughts. Um, so the, I, I've had this movie in mind as my pick since we started doing picks which was conveniently right after my birthday last year. <laughs> so it's, this was actually my first pick to do. And it's always been this movie because it's one of my favorites ever, but not a lot of people necessarily talk about it, especially in horror. Um, so I thought it would be at the very least worth discussing. Um, I did put it at the top of my 90s list. So obviously <laughs> I hold this film in high regard, but this was the first time I watched it, I guess more with a critical eye trying to like kind of see you know more of the things within the movie i gotta say this movie is built so well like it's like every scene has a purpose to the overall masterpiece like master plan that john doe has um and i really like how they're laying the pieces scene by scene to come up with the final ending which i i agree with joe i think it's the perfect ending for this movie because it's the completion of John Doe's masterpiece. And that's kind of what the whole movie is about. And one thing I particularly love about the whole plan is that John Doe knew exactly what he was doing throughout the whole film to complete his masterpiece, except what he didn't anticipate was that Somerset would break the law. And he does that by getting uh, library information from the FBI. And that's the reason he's almost caught. So it's cool to see that by doing something out of the box, he almost catches John Doe early on in the film. And I never really caught that, I guess, when I watched it originally, whereas now I, was, I really noticed that and I thought that was great. Uh, one of my favorite scenes in this, and this goes out through the whole movie, is uh, Mills trying to like show Somerset that he's already ready and he's already got the experience to do the job, but also trying to impress him. Um, you know, just, I don't know why he needs to impress him because he's leaving, but he wants to do it anyway. And my favorite scene that shows that is when he's trying to read, read, uh, like Dante's Inferno or, uh, the, uh, the allegory, but he can't figure it out because it's too complicated. I don't know if you ever, you guys ever read the text, but it's super like old English it's and shit. It's fucking terribly hard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And yeah. then a cop brings him the fucking uh, cliff notes about it. And I thought that was so clever, you know, because that, that's so something someone would do, right. Just to impress someone. Uh, so just little scenes like that I also didn't expect how like funny some of the scenes were uh some of the lines that Mill says just made me laugh like when they're at the diner he, he says to um to Somerset can you sit in front of me I don't want to make it look like we're dating <laughs> like just these little lines that come out of nowhere which I thought were uh, really clever and really funny um I, I love this movie I think it's amazing all of the you know different uh, sins are super well represented and very gory and uh, I like how they're slowly like unveiling kind of the plan and everything and I just yeah it's great and there's also stuff on another level which uh, you know you wouldn't realize watching the film but for example 
seven minutes into the film exactly like at seven zero zero mills gets the call for the very first uh victim you know when he's in the bedroom and he gets the call that's that, that happens at exactly seven minutes and seven minutes before the end of the film you see a flash of gwyneth paltrow's like uh, head uh just pop up really quickly like one flash just one and which is flash of her head yeah so it's like is a, it attached to her body or is it... I, I i think so i think it's still attached but they did build the head and they used it in another movie apparently um which i i read uh in wait like, like they they flash it like subliminal messaging yeah kind of like they did in <gasps> fight club too and it's That's exactly creepy. seven minutes before the end of the film so it's kind of to show the beginning of the seven and the end of the seven. That's good. That's, that's crazy. And also, oh. you know, 7 p.m. delivery box. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't even the, think of that. The movie's uh, two hours and seven minutes. Uh, if you combine, like, if you watch it in a theater, it takes seven reels of film to, wa- <laughs> to watch it. Like, it's wow. just, this movie's on a fucking other level. Uh, it's just so well laid out and detailed. The, the sets are fucking incredible. Uh, the sloth set is super impressive with all the little trees, all the sentries in the air, and the gluttony one with all the food. And yeah, it's it's just fucking amazing. I I love this film. It's just so good. Good pick, solid pick. Um, I, I'm on the hunt for that clip of Gwen's head. It, it, it's like a flash. It's like a, it's very it's like quick a really flash. Really quick yeah. flash. Yeah. It's basically. I always so when I watched it, I thought it was to signify like him just thinking like of his wife really quick, like in his head, because it's when he's pointing the gun. And it's like literally a second before he shoots uh, John Doe in the head. Oh. And they just flash her face really quick. So I uh, I feel super terrible for um, his wife. Like, I'm not a huge Paltrow fan, fan, but I think she's like awesome in this because she's so I small and like, not, not fragile is the right word, but like vulnerable. Um, and then she reaches out to Somerset like, and that speaks a lot for Somerset too. He's like a great guy. Like, who the hell is this chick? Like, reaching out to me, meet me for a diner to talk about like how she's just fucking trying to be a strong wife and then drops a bomb. Uh, spoilers if you haven't seen this movie, guys. I mean, watch the movie before listen to this, but that, uh, you know, she's pregnant and that just fucking, we get some more character development from him saying like, yeah, I, might, I had a girl once, like she was pregnant and I told her to get rid of it and it haunted him like his whole life, you know? So makes her demise even <laughs> even more brutal man because she's Mm -hmm. such a nice person and then to think about this fucking guy he is he's i know sam did you not like him sam because kevin spacey or because you hated him because he's such a good actor is it i think it was a little bit of both but mostly because of the character like he was just so like numb and slimy and it's like who do you think you are sir yeah and when he's taunting brad pitt like from the car and like he knows how to get under his skin and brad pitt's like saying like correct things like you're just fucking masochist dude you just like doing it you're not like divine or anything and then he fucking i remember sparing your life and you're gonna have to remember for the rest of your life that i let you live and he's like he's right too it's like damn he, he gets yeah. under his skin so well and then when he's like you know we tried to play a house and she called for you and, and then when he tells her like, oh you didn't know she's pregnant like everything he says is just the perfect like it's coming to a head in brad pitt's performance like he's so desperate and you you know like before he does obviously right what's happening and you're like we're like morgan freeman's character in that scene where we're just like dude just, like you can stop this and then he fucking does what he wants kills him it's like damn it's such an effective ending and then just to leave it off on that like personally i think you know they're gonna take care of him he's not gonna serve any time for this because he's a piece of shit murderer and blah 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 because people have like murdered murders in the past and got away with it because obviously they deserve it. So, but it's still like, fuck man. Like he's, his life is ruined. Like it's mm-hmm. terrible. It's such a great ending. Yeah. And uh, credit to like, obviously like the, the, I mean the script, uh, cause like they, like you knew he was going to shoot him. Right. Cause like the whole movie, like there's these little, scenes where he like does like loose cannon shit like and you just know like it's going like he's not gonna be able to like hold himself back enough but like in the back of anyone could right no i mean probably not right I but, couldn't, like, I, yeah there's like but there's like you know it's gonna happen but then there's just like that little one percent where you're like maybe he'll may he'll you know do the right thing but 
like, yeah. And it's just like, ah, it's so well done. Like that ending is just, I mean, that's why it's like one of the most iconic endings of all time. So my question is, when did John, John Doe have time to kill Brad Pitt's wife? I know he did it after he left to work, but then he shows Before up Before he walked into the police station. Like in a two hour window or something. Cause it looks like they got to the station pretty early pretty in the morning. Much. So that was why yeah. one of the, I'm like. Eh. And Mills and Somerset slept at the, at the, uh, at the That was the night station. they slept at there? Yeah. That, that's why. Oh, because, so yeah. they, he wasn't home. That makes it even more. And yeah. she tried, she tried to call him to find out where he was because one of the cops says, your wife keeps calling. Uh, you oh, should boy. call her back. And that, that's why, because. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> Brutal. Gosh damn. <laughs> and uh, did did uh, John Doe have this detective duo in mind the entire time or did it just fall into place? I think that's why he went as a photographer to see who was on the case so he could, you know. Got it. Yeah. Fucking John yeah. Doe. So, it, I mean, yeah, so, but that is a good question. Like, so it did just kind of fall into that place. Like, so if it was another detective duo, like he would have went and found that information, like, his plan was always just to kill like a detective's wife or something like was that always i don't know if he had an an other another envy in mind yeah or who knows maybe you know i don't know that's that's one of the open-ended questions right Mm -hmm. i mean he's he's clearly full of shit too john doe so he could have done anything to fit his own narrative in a stupid mind right right Mm -hmm. um but how many times did we see john doe in the background where we didn't know it was him yet i know outside of the leather shop he walks by and then Obviously, he takes his picture and has a, a confrontation. Couple times. With him. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that's good. And his fucking apartment's like a, a scary maze from a Halloween attraction. It's like, jeez. Yeah, no kidding. That's yeah. Yeah, great. Um, you guys want to get into the few questions we got about it? Uh, Joe, do you have to leave? I, mean, sure. uh, I got like five minutes, so, okay, so if you guys maybe maybe we'll want to rate it, and then you guys can just do the questions without me. Right, that's cool. fine. Yeah, sounds good. So I'm interested, Sam. What do you rate it since it was your first time? Um, I'm gonna rate it. I don't know. I feel like there's pressure because I'm like, well, what do you guys? How you do you, girl? Where does it rate on your scale? Am I am I too giving with my rates? Um, it was a really great movie, and especially back then, like holy cow! So I'm gonna give it a nine point two. Very nice. I'm high up there. It's a 9.5 easily, uh, maybe a little higher, but definitely not lower. Um, just a little bit of the timing f- bugs me a little bit with this movie with between crimes and stuff. But other than that, it's fucking, it's great. Uh, yeah, to me, it's a, a pretty perfect movie. It's in probably my top 20 of all time, which is why I give it a perfect 10. I, I think this movie's perfect. I don't, there's not one scene or one thing there's nothing i can think of that is like any sort of negativity towards this movie i absolutely love it and i'm right there with you this is one of my rare tens you know i think it's as perfect as a movie can be really like of course it's not perfect you know there's no such thing as a perfect movie you know it is a little slow at times and stuff like that but uh, it's just so well made on every level that i think it deserves a 10 uh which he leaves actually leads us to our first question which was from mandy why do you think this 10 out of 10 film, for me anyways, is rarely mentioned among the horror greats? I mean, there's nothing like John Doe isn't like a Halloween character you're going to dress up as, right? So mm-hmm. probably that. Because if you wear a suit and you say you're Brad Pitt, be like, what? <laughs> like, so there's nothing like recognize- recognizable like Candyman or Michael Myers or anything. Do you think me it's because people don't consider it horror? Because I, I, I've had this discussion with non-horror fans mostly. And they said it's not horror at all. It's a crime movie. And I, I could see what they're saying, but I think it's more horror than some movies that people consider like horror, you know? Mm-hmm. So just because it doesn't have any paranormal stuff, there's a lot of horror in this movie. And I think the best comparison sounds so lambs. Mm-hmm. I think it's, you know, kind of in that same vein. Yeah, if you say science is horror, you definitely got to say this is horror. Mm-hmm. I personally think it's horror. So. I think it is too. But I can see also the argument that it's not because it's, you know, a cop procedural, basically. Looking yeah. for a weirdo. It, it's like a horror film, but from the perspective of the good guys chasing as opposed to the bad guy killing. You know, so that's what it is. But I definitely 
think it should be mentioned among the greats but you never hear it. like you 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 ask a big room of horror fans what their top five horror films are not many are going to say seven if any at all you know people just don't consider it poor for some reason uh her next question what do you think of the alternate ending where somerset kills john doe just to fuck up his masterpiece and save mills better worse or about the same worse um that's only storyboarded right Story- yeah, think, didn't yeah, shoot yeah. It, but it was storyboarded yeah um worse because if you want to go i mean i mean i think this is fincher's original direction is to have it completed and you know brad pitt's wrath right so yeah i think it's good good original yeah i I like the idea that somerset would jump in at the last second just to fuck up the masterpiece but then also save sims kind of right from retaliation yeah well that that's the whole yeah that's the whole thing is that you know it's it's it would save Mills at the same time. I mean, he's got nothing Mills, to lose. Yeah. He has no, mm-hmm. you know, he has really no career left. He's almost done and everything. But at the same time, seeing the masterpiece complete is what makes this movie, I think, so great. So it would have taken a little bit away from the ending, in my opinion. Um, so I, I'm I'm asking you this. It's not the next question. The ending. What is your interpretation of what happens to Mills after the events of Seven? Um, I'm with Todd. Like, I feel like they'll take care of him because, well, and also like, I can't believe that he was, he he was talking about trying to claim insanity. It's like, bro, you literally had a thought out plan of all of this stuff. Like, you're not going to get away with that. that Sorry. Right. Yeah. And so I don't think that I don't, maybe he would have been, maybe he would have done some jail time or something. I think he would have been fine. Like. Yeah, if he did go to jail, he would have been away from everyone else or something. I I just worried about like his mental health, not if he was going to jail or not. I was just like, what? That's like, I can't even imagine how fucked up your mind would be. Yeah, I, I think professionally speaking, um, he'll be fine. There's no judge or DA, especially like 1995, that's going to convict him or even take charges to him, let alone that those cops will probably alter the scene, you know? just to protect them, which rightfully so, because you, I mean, there's no, there's no, I guess if you're a true believer of law and order where everyone gets a free shot at trial, things like that, you know, there's no way around that this guy's a piece of shit and he deserved it. Um, but yeah, emotionally, I mean, yeah, Amy's, I don't see him ever getting back on his feet because that's, I mean, fuck, dude, his wife was brutally murdered and he's like this uh, gung-ho, like I'm a tough guy, whatever. And he, he probably think in his mind that he couldn't protect her, which he didn't. And fuck man i don't know mm-hmm. probably kill himself honestly yeah unfortunately that's why i think what happened to him mm-hmm. uh i did i don't remember if this was in the dvd commentary in the original dvd or it was something i read but um apparently the law states that if you kill a suspect uh an unarmed suspect you get the death penalty um so uh, but it, again that. you know it, it goes through criminal proceedings and shit like that i think you could definitely make insanity in this particular case but i mean i don't there's there's been cases like without getting graphic detail where (laughs) people will kill an unarmed person that was unarmed and that happens a a suspect in custody you know yeah i don't know it's i mean you i not to be the devil's that well no the devil's advocate like there's videos of suspects grabbing cops guns when their hands are completely yeah. handcuffed behind their backs still and they still manage to get shots off at cops it's like right. they, they'll, they'll be able to swing it yeah but i think but, he'd probably kill himself is yeah unfortunately. i mean he lost everything right so yeah what's that apartment success yeah exactly <laughs> uh the last question is from the crypt salem what's everyone's favorite kill sloth right so it's so brutal fucking scary it's fucking yeah, brutal. It's awful that makeup Glutt- is just amazing. Gluttony is pretty fucking brutal too, though. Uh, at least that one was done in like a day or whatever. Yeah, what about just, Lust, though? Yeah, Lust is oh, pretty... Yeah. That pretty actor, good. too, that yeah. was being interviewed. Oh, he was great. Yeah. He had to, you know, have sex with a girl with a Can you knife imagine? penis. A knife yeah. penis, yeah. It's Jesus. insane. Yeah, that, yeah, but I think Sloth is the most memorable of the seven in this one. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, because the other like pride you barely see. Yeah, um, there was gr- no attachment. What was pride? To that one. Is, is a girl who like the model. model. 
Yeah, the model. That's fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> well, he would have a field day nowadays with fucking. Yeah, no kidding. Social, social with media. social media, this pre social media. So he'd be like, um, fuck. Greed was like disgusting, but I guess because it was the lawyer known. <laughs> so, yeah, that was like a precursor to Saw for sure. Oh, yeah. The, Saw was definitely. A lot of this movie. Yeah, they borrowed a lot, or AKA borrowed a lot from this movie. Yeah. Do you think, do you guys wish that they would have shown. Um, Mill is it Mills? I get them confused Mills, now. Yeah. Mills's wife being killed, like somehow. I don't think he needed it. You know, um, I think it would have been, been fucked far. up to like yeah. see though. Yeah, I just don't think they need hair. it. Yeah, Maybe, yeah. I think it also would have been effective too, if. Well, I mean, this isn't as impactful, but if um, John Doe was lying the whole time and there's like nothing in the box, you know, and. Brad Pitt just snapped because he, you know, was off on edge. But well, so the studio ending, <laughs> um, which Brad Pitt fought not to have, was that it was it was a dummy head, mm. and, and Somerset notices, and then there's a chase scene with uh, them chasing after. I don't like that ending. Yeah, me neither. And that's sense. why, you know, because <laughs> they thought it was too dark, and people wouldn't go see it if it was too dark. Um, so I would have hated that ending. <laughs> but yeah. No, I, I don't think you needed to see the honestly the head. I think just knowing that it was the head in there was enough. You know, it, it, it's when he finds out that she was pregnant. The yeah. the look Kevin Spacey gives her, like, oh, yeah, he's he didn't, didn't know. know. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh fuck, fuck what a you, creepy man. man. Yeah, yeah. He should have Morgan Freeman at that point should have walked up to him and unhandcuffed him. Like, here you go, he got away. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, no. I'm just like, why didn't he tackle him and like shove his face to the ground and shut him the hell up? It's like you knew where this oh, was Morgan going. Freeman. Yeah. Or like put your body over his so you can't yeah. shoot him. Yeah. No, not that, but yeah. <laughs> do you think a part of him wanted him to shoot him? Like a small part of him is like maybe he should just fucking shoot him. Yeah, I I wonder about that. Some I mean he's not a perfect character, right? So yeah. He's not, but his whole character arc, though, wasn't it like he's tired of all the filth and yeah, how people are? So, might have gone against his character, right? Trait. Um, like he still tried to stop him, he just didn't go in yeah. front of him, you know? That's true. I'm just glad that Morgan Freeman didn't shoot Sims, like I or Mills. Sorry, they, they could have totally went that route where Somerset kills him for whatever reason. That would have sucked too. Somerset uh-huh. killed Mills. Why yeah, like shoot him. Them? No, just to like stop him from shooting a suspect. Like I couldn't see that being a oh. twist that they probably toyed around. Oh, with. like maybe shooting him in the foot or something. Or just killing him outright, just what? to save save the guy. Now, I don't want to want this, but I can see like totally like a studio saying, <laughs> "Yeah, need to have them have a twist again." Keep that that's even darker than the fucking yeah. original. <laughs> can you imagine like he was me all along? <laughs> then Morgan Freeman goes Shawshank Redemption because he killed. Mills, there you go. Right, yeah, yeah. Connected universe. Right. And changes his name to Red. Anything else you guys want to say about the movie before we close it off? Mm, no, great movie. Yeah, amazing. Happy right. birthday. Thanks. Happy birthday, Steve. Okay, guys, that's going to wrap up this week's episode. Be sure you're following us on Instagram and Discord. Don't forget about our signing that we are hosting here in Salem at Silver Moon Comics with the lovely and maybe handsome Damien Maffei. And um, next week we are reviewing Malignant. Excited to get into that. And we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. See ya. I saw you with the box. Who was in the box? Because I envy your normal life. Put the gun down, David. It seems that envy is my sin. Oh, what's in the box? Not till you give me the What's gun. in the fucking box? It's my in the box.